Hello everyone and welcome back to Happy Human Club. I'm Soph Mosca. I'm the host of this podcast and today we are going to be talking all about New Year's resolutions. But obviously before we get in, I just want to say hi because obviously I've been gone since Vlogmas started. I don't remember what the last podcast episode I did was. It might have honestly been the one... Or talk about books. I can't remember, but it was a long time ago and we are far overdue for a new episode. So before we jump into anything, I just want to plug my social media. You guys can follow me at Soph Mosca on pretty much every social media besides Snapchat is S-O-P-H-E-R-R-R. I also have more exclusive content on passes. It's just Passes.com slash Soph Mosca, I believe, but I think if you go to Passes, you could probably just search my name and find it there, but it's also linked in my Hubi link, which is in my bios. But I also just wanted to thank you guys for following along on Vlogmas if you did, and I think you guys really enjoyed this year's Vlogmas. I will say This wasn't my favorite Vlogmas ever. I definitely had like a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, One of which, like the elephant in the room, I moved. And I was dealing with, you know, figuring out how to work out the like termination of a lease, which I've never had to do before. And it was just like overwhelming on top of, you know, literally living with a place with all the issues that you know, were the reason I left and then also like finding a new place and the finances of that because moving no matter how you do it is so expensive and just, you know, all that on top of it was the holidays and I had all these pre-planned holiday travels that were happening during, you know, all that. Like, I don't know. It was just not my favorite Vlogmas ever, but I also think it was hard because I was like, comparing it to last year and last year was just like an exceptionally fun vlogmas I was just in a stage of life where every single day I was just hanging out with friends doing all these fun things and it just made for like really fun vlogs and I'm just in a different stage of life or at least like you know in that moment in December like I just was in a different stage of life where I had a lot going on versus like last December I was at more of like a null more of like a standstill and just was able to like enjoy life enjoy my time But I'm happy that you guys enjoyed the vlogs regardless. And yeah, that was Vlogmas. Also, thank you for your patience during Vlogmas because there weren't any um, podcast episodes. So overall, just thank you guys. And so like I said, I moved. I now live in a house. It's still rented, um, but I did move to a house. If you guys haven't been following along on, I guess I really only talked about it on my vlogs, but... My apartment just, (laughs) it had like every health worry issue that there could be or not even health. Like there was mold, there was roaches, but then also like my hot water would go out for like hours to days on end constantly. There's so much more. My garage door would be like jammed open. Like the garage for the whole building would be like jammed open. So it wouldn't be closing, which like, Obviously, like I lived in a really busy area where like car theft would have been like very, very possible. And like, you know, when you're when you move into a place and you're paying for things you think you're getting and you don't end up getting them, that's when it becomes an issue. So like the the door was never closing or not never, but the door often got jammed in the garage and like there was like front door security issues. Like sometimes my key literally wouldn't open the front door and then sometimes I wouldn't need a key to open the front door which obviously is a a security issue in and of itself the elevator is a whole other story literally just so much and then there was like just the dryer didn't work and on top of these issues the management like wasn't solving them so obviously before I got to the point of like I'm I need to terminate this lease I had reached out again and again and again trying to resolve the issues because I didn't want to have to move, you know? Like I moving, like I said, it costs so much. I just moved like six months ago and it was a big move. It was from Florida to LA. Like I didn't want to move again. So obviously like I had tried and tried and tried to get these things fixed. And there would be times when like towards the end of it, I would have sent like five emails 
because five different things came up and no answer. But then I don't think I told this online, but like, so um, like this was my breaking point. I had sent, it was like everything was going wrong. I didn't have hot water. I found a couple more roaches. I like the mold was an issue. They kept coming to like, quote unquote, fix my washer, but all they would do is like clean it with vinegar and like it wasn't actually solving the mold issue. Like the mold isn't only like what you can see, you know, like mold spreads and it's like probably in the wall and it's like, it's just like nothing was actually being solved. And I had like six technicians come and basically just like tell me my dryer's broken. And I'm like, I know, I know, <laughs> but no one was fixing it. No one was replacing it. Like it was just like absurd. And I had been sending emails about like all the things that were going wrong, not getting a reply. And then I had my automatic rent payments turned on, but I forgot that I had turned them off. I think, I forget why I did it. I think I was like switching a card or something. I don't remember, but I had automatic payments accidentally turned off. And so the day after rent was due, like obviously I thought that it was automatically paid, but the day after it was due, I got an email saying like, not an automatic email, like literally an email from the guy I had, I had been trying to get in contact with telling me that my rent was late and that I needed to pay it like immediately. And that was my breaking point because I was like, well, now I know, like you are blatantly ignoring my emails about real concerns, like health concerns, safety concerns, but you'll still take my money. And like, that was just my breaking point. But anyways, I ended up moving and I now live in a house. Wait, also guys, side note, cause I just took a sip of it. I'm drinking this Chamberlain coffee, canned coffee. I've heard so many people hate on it. It's literally so good. Like I, it's my new favorite thing. Anywho. So I moved into this house and it is like honestly a dream. Like it is so bright. It is so my style. There's so much room for Augie and for me and for guests. And it just suits me really well. Um, and it's like, Obviously, when you move into a house, especially like in LA, like obviously the price point is a lot higher than it would be like in an apartment. And I don't know, I just had a lot to think about before I decided like if I wanted to go ahead and like rent a house versus an apartment. And ultimately, like I decided this would be worth it because like I had you guys so in mind when I was choosing a place because I feel like. I don't know, like uh, my job is I create videos and I want to be putting out the best content I can put out. And as silly as it sounds, although my therapist tells me not to call it silly because it's a real valid reason, but as silly as it sounds, one of my main things when I choose a place is it has to look good on video. It has to look good in pictures. And that was like my main, main priority with this place. And when I saw it, I was like, you know what, like it's worth the extra money. It's worth whatever. I, kn I knew you guys would love this place. And I mean, I obviously loved this place so much, but I just knew you guys would love it. And I knew the videos would go so hard. I knew the pictures would go so hard. And I knew Augie would be so happy here because he has so much more room and there's so much natural sunlight. And he's such like a cold, wait, is it a cold blooded? dog like okay not a cold-blooded dog there's no such thing but like things that are always cold what are those called I don't remember but like he's always he's always cold and um like there's so much natural sunlight here for him he's constantly laying in the sun it just makes me so happy like he seems so happy I don't know I really love the location like everything is perfect and it was just so worth it to me and like ultimately when I saw this place I wasn't sure if I was going to move because I was kind of thinking to myself like unless I find a place that's like so worth all that comes along with moving and all that would come along with like working on terminating this lease like unless I find a place that is perfect I'm just not going to do it especially because it was literally the end of the year like worst time to move but I went and toured this place and I was like yep <laughs> this is exactly what is worth it like this is the the house the place that makes that all worth it and so ultimately i decided to move here terminate my lease and we're now in a new space so if you guys haven't been following along 
on my YouTube, you guys have some moving vlogs to watch. So go ahead and watch those if you haven't already. Um, also side note, this isn't sponsored. I am working with them over on Instagram and TikTok, but, um, I worked with roadway again and like, yes, I work with them, but also like I choose them for a reason because I, I think that they are great. Like they are the ones that moved me, um, a few months ago from Florida to LA. That was the first time I used them. Like they're the greatest and they're always like funny. Like the, every single time, cause I had the guys that picked up my stuff in Florida, then different guys dropped it off in LA. And then I had guys pick up and drop off my stuff this time around. And all of them were so funny. Um, and they're always really nice, always super careful with my stuff. And they even like, like, I feel like they don't have to do this, but for example, like they're just diligent. Cause for example, I wanted my rug and my couch a certain way and I had them switch the couch around like four times. And then after they had switched it around right before they left, I asked them if they could move it over just a little more too. Like I was being kind of annoying with my couch, but like they didn't have to do that. I don't think their job is to like rearrange my furniture so much as like get it in the room it needs to be. And they just like go above and beyond. So again, this is not sponsored at all. Um, you will see sponsored content, content from them on Instagram and TikTok, but all of what I'm saying, even on there is like so truthful. I genuinely love Roadway. And if you guys are looking for movers, I think Roadway is a really great brand to go with. They mentioned to me that a lot of moving companies have been like, there's, there's been like a lot of moving company scams, which I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, but I've always had really great experiences with Roadway. So hopefully if you guys ever use them, you do as well. I actually just remembered I have a code. I forget what it is, but it'll be on the sponsored content. But I do have a code if you guys want a discount to um, like use them. Again, this is not sponsored. Like I am not getting paid to say this at all. I just wanted to share, with that, share that with you guys because having movers is game changer. I've moved a bunch of times without movers and it's really, honestly, if if you can stomach the price of movers, I think they are worth it if it's an option for you. But anyways, today, like I said, it's the first podcast back. It's also the first podcast of the new year. And I feel like it's the perfect time to kind of go over like my new year's resolutions. None of these are like groundbreaking. None of them are like really anything crazy at all, but I just think these are the things that I really want to work on in the new year. And I feel like these are things that you guys will definitely relate to. Like, I don't know. I feel like these are not like necessarily specific to me. So I thought this would be really fun. I, I know people like have, you know, different opinions about New Year's resolutions. And I can definitely see both sides. Like I know a lot of people don't like them because they're sort of like unrealistic and just sort of set you up to not achieve all these crazy goals. But then there's the people that like are all gun ho about them. And they really see them as like a fresh start. And I definitely lean more on that side. But I think overall what it is, is it's just like, it just gives you a second to like collect your thoughts and like redirect your intentions and like your purpose and your meaning in your day-to-day -day life. And like remember, okay, what makes me feel the best and things like that. So I don't think it's about so much like setting all these like crazy, crazy goals. I think it's more just like redirecting your intentions and like getting back to what makes you the best version of yourself, what makes you the happiest and like what makes you feel best. And so that's sort of how I look at New Year's resolutions. And even in the past, like even literally last year, I think I still was setting some unrealistic expectations and like nothing is worse than not achieving them. And like, obviously you want to set goals for yourself and everything like that. And I think you can, like, you still can, but something about having that like set in stone written New Year's resolution, when you don't achieve it, it's really like, Ooh, like <laughs> I really thought I would have done that. Um, like I was reading my New Year's resolutions for last year and there was a couple of them that I just like didn't achieve. And I was sort of like, dang, like I know when I wrote this, I truly believed I could reach that and I didn't. So it was just like a little bit disappointing, you know? So this year when I went into it, I really didn't want to put anything that I couldn't achieve. Like I didn't want to put a financial goal for example, because, you know, 
I'm obviously going to work towards financial goals and I still have them in my brain, but I don't want to look back in a year and not have reached a financial goal because it's kind of like, it kind of discredits like, okay, I didn't reach that financial goal, but I made an outlandish financial goal. So like I still exceeded some expectations I had for myself with finances, but I didn't reach this like really great financial goal I set for myself and it's just disappointing. So I didn't want to do anything monetary. Obviously I still have it in my brain. Obviously I'm always still working towards things like that, but I wanted these like actual real life, very tangible, very possible things to be my new year's resolution, new year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. So I figured we could go ahead and get into them. There's only like six. The very first one, this is like the most important when anyone asks what my new year's resolution is this is the answer i give them because this is like my number one this is my my resolution i want to follow the washing instructions on my clothing and this probably if you guys already do this probably sounds silly but i have just ruined far too many articles of clothing and it's like really embarrassing to admit because it's simply out of pure laziness like there will be a sweater that I really love. And as I'm putting it in the dryer, I'm like, ooh, should I wash this? And I'm like, eh, it'll be fine. And I throw it in. Lo and behold, it's a toddler sweater when it comes out of the <laughs> of the dryer. You know what I mean? Like there's just too many things, literally because I was lazy. Like it's not hard to hang dry something. It's not hard to lay something flat. It's not hard to hand wash something, you know? It's just not. So I really want to make sure I'm being more careful and following the washing instructions, especially on like more delicate pieces. And I just feel like it's just like an important life skill that you need to have. Like you need to know how to properly do laundry. You know, I feel like I just want to overall like improve my laundry like skills because like think about it. Every mom, every grandma, honestly, every parent probably like, but I feel like it's like mom and grandma specific, but they can get a stain out of anything. They can, they know how to wash anything. Like I want to get to that point because I'm not trying to have kids one day in like a few years and have them have a mom that has no idea how to properly wash clothes. Like it's a skill I need to have. I'm going to be halfway through my twenties in June. You know, like I have six more months until I'm literally in my mid twenties. Enough's enough. I need to do laundry properly. So that's definitely, you know, I think it's time, you know, I, I just like, I don't know. I did get a, drying rack on Amazon. I'll link it in the show notes and also the description if you guys are watching on YouTube. It's like not groundbreaking, but I like the drying rack I got if you guys want to um also have this be your new new year's resolution or you're for whatever reason in the market for a drying rack. I'll put the one I got. Um but it's literally as simple as that. Like literally just getting a drying rack. Like I don't know why I put that off for so long. I started to like follow washing instructions a bit more in my last place and I would like have laundry all over my apartment for like ever because you guys know the saga of my washer and dryer never dried. So I always like, I ended up just being like, whatever, I'll just lay it flat to dry. And then I was like, wait, this isn't even that bad. I should really do this for the things that can't be dried, whatever. Oh, on this topic though, I feel like, did I write this somewhere? I feel like I wrote this or maybe I said it in a vlog. But my friend Emma, I think it was yesterday, actually sent me a TikTok about how there's a feature on iPhone where you can take a picture of your like tag that has the washing instructions on your clothing and it'll tell you how to properly wash it. Like, you know how there's always those like symbols that like you're like, I don't know what that means, but there's like the symbols on the tag. So it'll tell you what those symbols mean. So... I'm going to be using that feature for sure. This next one is like not something I talk too much about on social media, but we're being just really raw and authentic. Um, My second resolution is to work through spending habits in therapy. So I know that I've briefly talked about this on YouTube and maybe the podcast before. I don't really know. Um, But... 
everyone, or not everyone, I guess, but I feel like if you struggle with any mental health issues or any sort of anything where you need a coping mechanism, everyone has their own coping mechanism. Um, and for, for me, retail therapy is a very, very real coping mechanism. Um, and like when I start to feel down or lost or numb or sad or like whatever negative headspace, negative mental health, whatever, if I'm going through something, my very first instinct is like, I need to buy something. I want to buy something, but it's like not even a want. It's like a need. Um, and I don't know, like shopping gives me something to be excited about when like nothing else is exciting me or like when I just feel like out of control in my life, like I can control that, like what I'm buying, I can control what I'm spending my money on. And I don't know, like I think there's a healthy way to go about this. Like you can like shopping, you know, and shopping can make you happy, but I don't think that I go about it in a healthy way. Um, and it's kind of like I lack impulse control and it's something that I am working through in therapy. Like it's like, it might sound silly, but it's like, it's deeper than loving to shop, which is also true, which is like why it's tricky because I do genuinely love it, but it's, it's become like this vice that's like an unhealthy coping mechanism. Like there's a difference between, you know, buying something once in a while when, you know, you need a little pick me up to have it being almost like you can't stop yourself. And I didn't ever want to get to a place. Obviously this is like really extreme and I'm not to this place, but like I would never ever want to get to a place where I'm like sabotaging myself and like putting myself in positions where like I have to dig myself out of a hole. Do you know what I mean? Like I've never, I've never gotten there, but with like the trajectory of how I started behaving with my spending, it almost felt like that. Like it felt like I was headed in that direction. And like, obviously I would never want to get there. And I think I was self-aware enough to be like, okay, hold your horses. Let's bring this up in therapy. And so we've been like working through it. But I just feel like there's a reason behind why I lack this self-control like in this area, like when it comes to shopping and like why it's my main coping mechanism. And, you know, like I want to get to the bottom of it and have a healthy relationship with shopping and spending money. And I don't want to have that vice, that coping mechanism. Like I want it to just be like an activity, something I do because it's fun. I don't want it to be like, my way of like coping with trauma and with mental health like it's it when it's like too much of a good thing is always too much you know what I mean like it's like weaponizing a good thing and using a good thing in a bad way if that makes sense like hard to control urge um that is worsened when things are not going well in my life um And I'm grateful that this is the vice that my brain has chosen to like be the thing that gives me dopamine when nothing else will. However, I still feel like it's a kind of like a self-sabotaging behavior that I really want to work through. So one of my resolutions is to bring that up in therapy and to work through it. And I actually just did that for the very first time yesterday in my therapy session. So that's me being really real and honest with you guys. <laughs> so uh, keep your mouth shut, okay? Don't be mean to me about that one. I am human and being human comes in really weird forms sometimes, right? Let's not judge each other for our coping mechanisms. We're all working through it. My next resolution is keeping up with my almost daily walks. Not every day, but most days. Um, you guys know, like I've started being really into walks maybe like four or five months ago. And I just started walking with Augie most mornings to get coffee. 
like when I moved into my last apartment because my last apartment was like more in like a central area. So I was like kind of just, it was easy for me to start walking and it just sort of got me in the swing of it and made me really fall in love with it. Like I absolutely fell in love with it. I go to bed at night and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to do my walk in the morning. Like I just love it so much. And I know I've talked about this before, but I often wake up like really anxious and with this like sense of impending doom. Like it's just like a like a pit in my stomach, like ugh, like feeling like something really wrong happened or like like I'm in danger almost. Um and I like I'm pretty sure that's just anxiety. And I've noticed that like I'll wake up feeling this way. I go on my walks, I come home, literally a different person. Like the the difference in my anxiety levels is absolutely uncanny. Like it is baffling to me how a walk can do that to me like literally I'm just walking and I come home and I feel like I'm not in danger (laughs) like it just calms my anxiety soothes my anxiety so much and I feel like I just start the day in sunlight in fresh air and I just clear my brain and it just sets me up on a really good note for the day and I really love it it's also obviously exercise and walking is like one of the best things you can do for yourself. So I want to take advantage of my time and my mornings and I've been just really loving my walks. So I want to keep up with that, keep bringing that into the new year because it's really like my me time. Like I spend a lot of time alone, but a lot of times when I'm alone, I'm on social media or I'm working on a video or a podcast or a brand deal or I'm linking things like I'm just doing my job whatever I don't need to go into details but like working on things for work or I'm just scrolling on social media mindlessly or whatever um and I'm never really like in my thoughts in like a peaceful way like I'm there in my thoughts but I don't know something about the like the way I'm in my thoughts when I'm walking is much different than like the way I'm in my thoughts when I'm like on social media and like I usually put on a podcast and I think my brain just sort of like shuts off more on my walks but not in like a distracting way but in like a peaceful way like I'm focusing on my surroundings on how the air feels how the sun feels and I'm just like it's like my meditation like it's just my way of calming anxiety and just reducing stress levels and it's really been benefiting me and I really love it so I definitely want to bring that into the new year my next resolution is getting back on my reading grind because you guys know I was on such a reading kick for like a good few months like I was reading a book a week for a period of time and during vlogmas I fell off just because like my brain was consumed by vlogmas 24 7 um not that it's like like it's literally just me vlogging all day and then like editing at night but it's just like I kind of just have like a one track mind I can't think about much else during vlogmas just because I don't know it, I just have a one track mind you know I just like am hyper focused on that and just like wasn't able to make space in my brain in my attention span for reading you know um but now that vlogmas is over I definitely want to get back into it because when I was consistent with it, I, I don't know. I just felt like it was helping my mental health so much and also like my anxiety levels so much. And I was sleeping (laughs) so good when I was reading before bed, like the sleep you get after reading right before bed is like unmatched. Like it is the best sleep you can possibly have. And I I, like, I just want to get back to that. I just, I don't know, reading is another thing that allows me to just like turn my brain off, but in the way of like, when I'm reading a book, it's impossible to think about other things. Like all I can think about is the story that I'm reading and it literally takes me out of my head because I have no choice. Like I'm, I can only think about the story, you know? So definitely, definitely want to get back on my reading grind. I'm literally still reading Vicious, which is such a good book. I just like need to get back into it and like force myself to start the habit again because it's like really hard to to begin to begin a habit and like get into the swing of reading. But then once you're in it, it's super easy to keep up with, at least for me. Like I love reading. I was like a reading machine for a few months. I just need to get back into it. And like the first couple times forcing myself at night to read rather than scroll 
will be difficult, but then like after that, I will be so happy that I did it. So that is 100% a New Year's resolution for me. My next New Year's resolution is putting more importance on making friends in LA. And this is something that I've been wanting to work on, obviously, since I moved here. But to be honest, like I moved here and I was just kind of faced with a lot of things in my own brain that I had been like shoving away for a really long time or that I was just kind of like avoiding. And I think like, Anytime I move to a new space, it stirs up emotions. I don't know if that's how it is for everyone, but that's just like how it is for me. And the things it stirred up were just like things that I was just so deeply pushing down. <laughs> and I just ended up really following, falling into a mental health pit. And it didn't help that like, I was away from my friends and I was away from familiarity and I also like I I don't think I really talked about this but like everyone online um and honestly like low-key in real life too like no one was saying it to my face but like I could tell and then also like my friends have told me since now that like things are different things are better they obviously didn't want to tell me like when I was in like the midst of my mental health struggles but like people online people in real life I think all kind of like thought I was stupid for moving here and just sort of like knew I wasn't going to be happy. And I, it was like really hard for me to work through like feeling like everyone was right because like literally like all I ever want to do is like prove people wrong. It's like, I can't not like, I just want to prove people wrong and prove people that I'm capable. And like, anytime someone doubts me, I'm like, yeah, okay, watch. And like, I just, I just feel the need to like prove myself all the time. And so like, when everyone was like, you're going to hate it, LA is going to like suck the life out of you, all this stuff. And then like, I actually was unhappy, even though it wasn't like, because I was in LA, like it was just because I had moved and because all these new emotions had stirred up. Um, uh, and I wasn't happy. Like it was just really hard for me to work through, like accepting that I felt like everyone was right. And I like, wasn't proving them wrong and that I was miserable. And it's almost like, it almost like feels embarrassing, but it, it, it wasn't the city that was doing it to me. It was just like, it was a big, like I could have moved to Portland, Oregon and like the same thing would have happened or mo- moved to Boston and the same thing would have happened. Like it was just because I moved from what I knew and what I became accustomed to and what I became comfortable with. And I had a lot more alone time than Mm -hmm. I was having. That's why everything stirred up. And so I just like, I don't know, like it just took me a long time to adjust from this move. Like I feel like I'm just now starting to feel settled. And honestly, maybe a lot of that was my old apartment maybe that just like wasn't the place for me obviously a lot was going on like since I moved in I didn't really even start telling you guys until like I was kind of getting really fed up with it because at first like again it was like embarrassing to admit that like things were going wrong you know um but I like just right after I moved in like I I just, it just took me so long to adjust so again maybe it was it was the apartment that like wasn't helping with the adjustment but um yeah, like I'm just now starting to feel settled and like, or maybe it's just like because I've been away from, like I've been in LA for longer. So maybe it's just like the time that I've given it like has finally worked. But either way, I'm finally feeling ready to pour more time and more energy into new friendships, which like, Obviously, I've wanted to do since I moved here, but there was just so much in my own brain. Like making new friends just seemed like a really hefty, lofty task that I didn't have in me. And like, I also was like, well, I don't want to replace my Florida friends, blah, blah, blah. But I've kind of worked through in therapy. Like, I don't need to replace my friends in Florida. Like I'm not replacing my friends in Florida, which quite frankly is like never going to be possible even a little bit like those are like the people that I know are going to be in my life forever and always like those are my like my people like 
they just, there's no feeling, oh my God, why am I about to cry? There's just no feeling like the feelings I have when I am with my friends. And I just feel so lucky to have the most supportive friends ever. Like, I would literally, I could jump off a bridge and my friends would be like, you're so fucking stupid for that, but good luck. I really love you. Like, I'm here to support you. Like, genuinely, I have the most supportive friends and the most honest friends and the most caring friends. And it's just like, part of me was like, I don't have room for any other friends because like, uh, how can I make room when I have people of this quality in my life? But like the thing is like I just want like I I need to have friends here like I need to have friends I can hang out with it is so important like as a human being you need friends and you need time with friends and sure like my tried and trues are in Florida but I want and need to make room for friends and friendship in LA and it, it's just friendship time is so important especially like me specifically like I can feel the difference in my life and my mood and my mental health when I've been spending time with friends it's so important for me individually but I feel like for everyone and it's something that I've 100% put on the back burner since I moved here and I don't want that to be the case anymore like this year I really really want to put an emphasis on that effort um and I feel like also friends make me feel more settled too because I genuinely think the reason I felt so settled in Tampa so quickly was because I made friends so quickly and the only reason I made friends so quickly is because I put myself out there and I forced myself to make new friends and I haven't been forcing myself to make new friends here so I really want to and me and my therapist were talking about um Because for me, like what I struggle with is like getting myself to go and hang out with new people or getting myself to hang out with people I'm not like super comfortable with. And like once I'm there, I'm totally fine. Like I do not consider myself a shy person. I don't, I don't even really consider myself to have social anxiety. I, I don't like that is such a real thing. And I just don't personally think I struggle with that. But there's this like weird thing that I have to work through where like I can't get myself to go. Like I, I just, I'm not good at like, being like yeah let's hang out like it's so hard for me and I don't know why but I'm working through it in therapy and something that we kind of talked about yesterday was just add in because for me like one of the things that's hard is like if it's not planned out like I am such a routine person so like if someone's like hey want to hang out today I'm like well no because like that wasn't in my plans for today do you know what I mean And I just like would operate a lot better if like say I had a friend that like every Saturday we go and play pickleball, which I'm using as an example because that's what I'm adding in just like a one day a week thing or maybe even like once every bi-weekly where like it's planned in like I go and do this one thing with a friend and then that sort of like puts puts me in motion an object in motion stays in motion and it kind of gets me flowing, gets me in like the friend atmosphere. And I think just having like, okay, every week or every two weeks on this day, I do this thing with this friend. And that doesn't sound as overwhelming as like, I need to make new friends, you know, like it's, it's very much like point blank, like, okay, every Saturday, me and my friend go and play pickleball. That sounds so doable to me versus like, I need to hang out with a friend this week. Like that's just not going to happen if I put it that way. So Anyways, making friends is definitely a New Year's resolution for me. My last resolution, which this is like also my, I don't know why I put this last because also when people ask my New Year's resolution, this is another one I'll give, but it is do more things that take up more time and cost less money. So I feel like this kind of like rounds out everything I was just kind of talking about, but I mean, it is what like, there's not much to explain about that. I want to do more things that take up more of my time and don't cost much money if any at all like pickleball like I mentioned I really want to get into pickleball it's active it's outside it's with a friend or with it could be with my girlfriend like it could be with anyone but it's not a a alone thing you know it's an activity with someone else 
I want to like make bread from scratch, something that I've been wanting to do forever. So I want to actually like do that. I want to do more like baking, cooking more intricate recipes. I want to do more things like puzzles and painting and coloring books. Obviously like reading, like I talked about, making my own nut milks maybe, time with friends and my girlfriend and like maybe finding a good show to binge watch once in a while. I never really watch shows anymore because I'm just, my my attention span is so, so short, which is so bad. So I want to work on that. But like there's been times when I've been like really into shows and like I spend hours watching that show and maybe for someone else, they want to like cut back on that. But for me, like I need more things like that, that don't really cost any much or don't cost much money or any money at all and take up a lot of my time because as someone who works for myself and works at home and who like lives alone and doesn't have too, too many friends where I live, like there's just a lot of time in the day sometimes. And again, like I said earlier in the episode, like too much of a good thing is still too much. And you know, like I just need things to occupy me, but I need those things to be beneficial to me and beneficial to like my mental health. So that is a priority of mine for sure. And uh, the other day I was hanging out with some friends and someone asked me what my word of the year was. And I had to think about it for a sec, but my word of the year I decided is patience. And that's kind of like in all aspects, patience with myself for sure, patience with others for sure. Um, and just patience overall, because I'm, I'm very much like an instant gratification person. I'm very much like a, like, okay, like I get an idea, it needs to be right away, like that type of thing. I just want to like take a breath sometimes and just like have some patience. So that's what I decided the word of the year was this year. So if you guys are watching on YouTube, everyone should comment down below their word of the year. I'm very curious to hear what you want, like what your intention is for the year. You can also leave your resolutions down below if you want, but I feel like Sometimes those are really personal, but definitely leave your word of the year if you feel comfortable with it because I want to read through and see what you all want for 2024. I turned 25 this year, you guys. That is so weird. That means I've been doing social media for what, like three, four years? Just bonkers. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for watching or listening to today's episode and I will see you guys so super soon in the next episode. Bye.